All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Uh, joining you from a little bit of a cloudy San Diego this morning. Yes, we get clouds occasionally. Um, and we've had a lot of rain, so we get rain occasionally too, but not enough to, to write home about. And I'm joined by Dion Mischler, who is actually just up the road in Elisa Viejo up in Orange County. How are you doing, Dion? I am very well. How are you today? I'm, I'm very good. And of course, uh, we we send the message out to everybody to stay safe and you know, stay hopeful, you know, help each other and, uh, and and keep going. And, and this too, this too will pass. So what we're going to talk about today is an interesting subject around inside sales. And this is, uh, and Dion's an expert in this. She helps a lot of companies and has helped her clients uh, see a 25% uptick in funnel activities and a 30% increase in deal closings. And she really knows how to put inside sales teams together and the best practices for how to onboard them. And that's what we want to talk about today. So, um, Dion, maybe start with uh, sometimes people maybe don't understand fully the difference between like an inside sales team and an outside sales team, a direct sales team. And then some think inside sales team is just a huge call center of people. Um, so maybe kind of explain all the different types of inside yeah. sales for, for those who are watching. Sure. And and it's it's definitely coming up more and more in that question, right? What's the, really the difference between inside sales and outside mm -hmm. sales, especially with everything that's going on right yeah. now? And inside sales is really an umbrella term is what I tell folks, right? It's kind of like um, dinner or having a meal, right? If you're going to have a meal, there's so many options in that phrase. And so your inside sales team is really, quite frankly, what you make of it. And it could be a call center. It could be a sales development team. It could be a business development team. It could be an inside sales closing team delivering demos if you're a SaaS company, Um we're seeing the rise of inside sales across industries and verticals and all that good stuff too. So um, I would just say for yourself internally, if you're going to have an inside sales team, work on your work, work on your own internal definition and, and make sure everybody knows what it is. Yeah. And, and I think to be perfectly honest, uh, even before this, uh, this crisis, uh, there was a lot more people who were doing selling virtually, right? Selling, uh, doing what we're doing right now uh, in terms of, you know, web conferencing and that. And therefore, I think that, yeah, it's, 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 uh, the lines are very blurred now and mm -hmm. people who once upon a time would have been considered like direct or field sales people are actually sitting inside doing web, web meetings. They are. And so what we're seeing a lot of, so when we work with organizations, whether I was a practitioner or now, mm. you're hearing my son downstairs, maybe potentially. So, yes. uh, um, is, you know, we work on messaging and we work on different things. And so what we're seeing right now is a lot of the playbooks forever that we've created. Um, but especially right now, we're seeing a lot of the organizations take the work that we've created for the inside sales team and we're pushing it, um, mm. and creating stand-up trainings for the outside sales team. So. So what is uh, so what are some of the best ways of setting up an inside sales team? Because obviously uh, uh, it's better to set it up deliberately from the start as opposed to just let it like evolve. So what are some of the best practices for setting up an inside sales team? Absolutely. So when we work with organizations, again, whether I was a practitioner or now, mm -hmm. um, the tagline for inside sales by design is be intentional, be deliberate, be successful, right? Have a plan, mm -hmm. um, have an idea, sketch it out. So we know kind of where the baseline is. And then if anything, how to course correct. And so um, we recommend starting with seven key areas of fundamentals with folks from your KPIs to your reporting. And when we work with organizations, it, we, we really, really coach to the for now mentality. So many times we'll build something and we don't take into an account. We don't take into account the maintenance. We don't take into account mm -hmm. the things that are going to change. We don't take into account things we can't see. So mm -hmm. we want to build um, to have some clear expectations. We also want to build to be agile. So we'll talk about mm -hmm. your KPIs. What are they? And they're hopefully not 100% revenue based, right? They can be and should be um, 30, 60, 90 day driven. There should be a large corporate North star for everybody, right? Based upon the initiatives mm -hmm. of the company that cascade down to each individual team. So we talk a lot about what are your fundamental KPIs, your metrics, what is the mission or purpose of the team? And does mm. everybody know it? Is it everywhere? Is it 
right? Does everybody know it? Um, we definitely talk about onboarding, sales training, sales manager 101, reporting, and then coaching and motivating. So we cover off on those seven key areas um, when folks are starting an inside sales team to really level set establish a framework and establish a benchmark and how to measure quarter over quarter and right. allow it. Yeah. Cause one of the things you just mentioned there, and I think it's key, and this is, is what you said about uh, 30, 60, 90 days and your KPI is not just being revenue driven because let's face it. I mean, obviously revenue is very important. That, yeah. That's why you're doing what you're doing, but it's a lagging indicator, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's not, it's it went once it's there it's there there's nothing you can do to influence it um so what are some of the things that you uh that you work with companies on uh creating more kind of leading indicators yeah so the leading indicators are are really all about the number of conversations mm -hmm. um and it's it's about the activity level right we're not talking measuring calls right and and that's always the easiest one and then some folks really really sure. push back hard on that one um, what we talk with folks about is the mindset, the visibility equals activity equals opportunity. So it's really about how visible are we being with our clients. And so we encourage everybody to work from a campaign basis and a campaign is simply a grouping of like calls, right? So mm -hmm. if for the quarter is net new logo increase or cross sell upsell or go to market or market validation, pick a strategic initiative. So there's a North star. And the campaign should run for about a quarter. And um, we'll say out of those, that campaign, what are the desired outcomes? And from there, we'll talk about what is the visibility. And so we'll talk about if we have 100 accounts or 100 targets. I know it sounds very, very pragmatic, but mm -hmm. right, it's what works. Um, you know, if we have a goal to sell to these 100 individuals, we actually want to monitor progress within those accounts. How many mm -hmm. people are in the buying committee? What do they look like? What works? What doesn't? What messaging? Right? So there's some of these components. What is that visibility? It is number of touches. I mean, let's be honest, right? If we're not sure. like and sending information, we're, we're kind of failing ourselves. So, but it's also progress against an overall goal. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, I mean, that's an interesting thing because I think people sometimes, as you say, I mean, they look at activity metrics only and it's just the numbers of things. But what you're talking about is getting very strategic, uh, having having a real, as you say, North Star, and then getting uh, then getting a little more granular on, on the visibility you need down into it. As you say, interesting, how many people are on the buying committee, for instance? What are their roles? What's their level of influence? All of that. I mean, those are and those are very key things, obviously, towards advancing any any strategic sale. Anyway, but this is this is a really good good uh, idea for people to take away is to have that uh, strategic approach, have that granular level, and know what you're looking for, know what you're measuring. Absolutely right. And some folks might be, especially for those of us that have been in tech, John. Right, we're really. Mm -hmm these concepts. Mm -hmm. um, our clients that are in the manufacturing world and distribution world where some of their constituents aren't necessarily used to this, right? So you've yeah. got folks that might be on the shop floor. It's, they're never answering their phone. So what's the best way to get in touch with mm -hmm. them? So we yeah. want all of this validation. We want to know what is the best way to get in touch with folks. And quite frankly, what are their personas, right? So mm -hmm what resonates with them at the end of the day. We really need to turn our messaging inside out, as I'm sure you've probably seen in your, your <laughs> so, so many organizations will, will, will delve into messaging. And, and I said, well, why would somebody buy from you? And they say, well, because we're awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I say, your mom is probably really, really proud, but nobody yeah. cares. Yeah, so yeah. We really need to be able to turn that inside out and talk about what is in it for people why do they buy from us? What do they like about us? What do they like about our service, right? And being able to really turn that other-centered messaging on. Yeah, I love what you say about the, the communication piece there because I do think that this is critical because it's, sometimes it's we fall into the biases of how we like to communicate, right? And obviously, uh, and especially for inside sales or sales in general, like the, the holy grail is always, I mean, we used to be getting in front of somebody, but obviously can't do that right now. So it's getting somebody on the phone. But to your point, what we're not looking at is how does the buyer like to communicate? Just like you said, somebody on the shop floor, 
he probably uh, never wants to take a phone call at that time. Maybe email is better for them. Maybe text is. Who knows? But you've got to sort of find out how they want to be communicated with and then adapt to what how they like to be communicated with, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I think we need to make sure that we are keeping our end result in mind. The, the mm-hmm. what we want to achieve never changes. Mm-hmm. How we get there is is somewhat discretionary within the bounds of appropriateness, right? Sure. Um, mm-hmm. so we're not we're not going to get wrapped around the axle on on dictating people's how. That's that's a little. It doesn't allow for creativity. Yeah, and I think that's critical now is uh, that you have to be a little bit more creative in how you communicate yeah. with people and just realize that uh, you know they're getting bombarded anyway. So you know, figure out the best way to communicate with that individual, and as we say that individual, uh, maybe there's five people on on the buying committee. There may be five people who like to be communicated with in five different ways and and, they, and maybe one's analytical, maybe one's more relational. And so you have to adapt everything. So I think I think the key is you're saying is is not to have a one size fits all approach. Yeah, you, you really can't. And it, it's really detrimental at the end of the day. So yeah, broaden your horizon. Yeah. And I think a good message for right now is uh, just to be perfectly honest, uh, the way the way your prospects or customers may have bought up till like three weeks ago may now have radically changed um, now. And we saw this happen with the financial crisis. I remember this clearly when suddenly the decisions on spending went further and further up the chain, more people were involved. So you have to be keenly aware. And I think that's also not to make that it's key that you don't make assumptions. 100%, right? So I I like assumption-based selling, right? So one of the things we always joke about is, thank God Al Gore invented the internet, right? Um, (laughs) But we say, never ask a question that you can find the answer to on the internet and Mm -hmm. leave an assumption. Right. So, hey, tell me what keeps you up at night is not going to work anymore. It's more about, hey, I was doing research preparing for this call. And here's what we're seeing in the market. One, two, three or ABC or is this, you know, and then being able to switch it to, is this what you're experiencing as well? Mm -hmm. Right. Really want to dig in. We want to come prepared. Um, Lead with those assumptions. Be prepared to be right. Be prepared to be wrong. But overall, be prepared to serve your customer. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing now is actually just asking good questions and 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 make and and as I said, the situation right now has changed for a lot of people. So acknowledge that and and get ahead of it and and ask them what has changed in their organization. I think people are be, be very quick to tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so so what are some what are some when you're looking at a, a when you're working with the team and maybe you're recruiting for inside sales are there particular types of people that you're looking for or does it really just depend on the on the type of sale and and, and uh, you know what's been sold yeah so there are some fundamental characteristics that that i look for in that organization mm-hmm. Right. And so we always encourage a balance between the quantitative and qualitative. Mm -hmm. So um, we will, if I'm part of the interview process, um, typically someone from the organization will do an initial phone screen. But then this this person, the candidate is given a link to my calendar. And it's up to them to schedule time. It's up to them to call me, things of that nature, right? Mm -hmm. Which is very, very a reversal, right? And so what we're looking or in anyone, but especially from a salesperson, is that drive and initiative, right? Can this person take the initiative, show up on time, open a conversation? Did they do their homework? And oh, by the way, I know if you looked at my LinkedIn profile, you know what I mean? So we're looking for some of those pieces, punctuality, drive, initiative, Mm -hmm. um, the ability to talk on the phone, right? (laughs) Some folks that are new to inside sales will do some coaching with the teams and we'll say, well, make sure you schedule a phone screen. And because people are new to to inside sales, they'll go, wow, I would have completely blown by that because I'm so used to interviewing people in person. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're looking for some of those hard and fast. Did you prepare? Do you have a pen, paper? (laughs) Just (laughs) fundamentals, right? You you sound good on the phone. Like you forgot. You just woke up. Um, Right. Work right? Um, Things of that nature. And then um, for organizations that are a little bit more technical, Mm -hmm. we're definitely looking for someone that has the technical acumen, um, the ability to at least talk the talk while they learn to walk the walk, 
Mm -hmm. right? Um, And so we're a firm believer in assessments and all that good stuff, right? We definitely need to make sure we have the cognitive intelligence and the cognitive ability at certain levels, depending on your organization. Yeah, because let's face it, there's nothing worse, is there, than if you get called by somebody and when you get into the conversation, you're left asking yourself, why does this person even like doing this? Why are they doing this? Like, you don't even say, you know, and, and then you're like, well, you know, did you just pick this job because you couldn't get another one? Or did you think you'd like this or whatever? I mean, sometimes it's amazing the kind of people that you come across. I mean, I feel bad. I feel, my goodness, you, you, you should go find something that you want to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, just the, the last piece here. Uh, why should why should an organization maybe who've traditionally done everything out in the field, and why should they consider maybe doing more from an inside sales perspective? Just given that the given the way the world is evolving today. Yeah, so I, I think it kind of goes back to what we were talking about at first, John, is understanding your customer. Mm-hmm. Right. So if your customer wants you to come on site and they want to meet with you for breakfast, coffee, lunch, dinner, happy hour, by all means, go for it. Yeah. Right. If that's your sales process and it works and your clients want that from you, then you should meet them where they want to be met. Mm-hmm. However, if on the other hand, you have folks and um, you have a, a group of clients that um want to work with you and interact with you online, they're happy doing a video call, they're happy doing Mm -hmm. calls, emails or text, then do that. Right. And so, but what we're also seeing is quite frankly, folks, um, some individuals, right. And Mm -hmm. I hesitate to generalize whether you're inside or outside, it's really about being able to have a conversation and put your words together and have a give and take, right. That's what conversation is, is the sharing of ideas. And, um, that's, that's the overarching principle for everyone. And it's, it's really more at the strategic level that says, do we have a a, a group of our customers that prefer being met? Do we have, do we have a group of customers that are okay buying from us remotely online with somebody? Then let's figure out our business and go from there. My take on it is quite frankly, that the, the majority of organizations globally are moving to inside sales for a variety of reasons that we've talked about. Yeah, and I think one of the interesting things that people should consider is that I think in initially when uh, virtual capabilities came around, it was it was basically the selling side was going, oh, this is a great way of saving money, not having to yeah, travel. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, but over but over time, that has switched, and and uh, and we have seen it even in uh, in in our own experiences where we will say to somebody, even if they're up the road say, oh, we could come and visit you. And they and the person goes, no, it's okay. Let's just do it virtually. And they want to do it because it's more convenient for them. They don't, uh, they can, and I think that's it. And I think that the world has transitioned. And I think people are going to find that more and more, uh, more and more buyers want to do it that way because it's just as, it's convenient for them as yeah. well. It's not just convenient for you. And sometimes trying to force a face-to-face isn't the right thing to do. It's not. It's not. And so when we work with folks, and I mean, traffic is terrible everywhere, but there's a yeah. there's a special case of craziness here in Southern yeah, California. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, but I'll talk with folks and they say, well, Dan, are you going to come on site? No. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. We're building your inside sales team. So, yeah. you know, what we want to be able to do is work with everybody in the organization and really build and develop this muscle of communicating remotely or on yeah. the phone text or email, right? We want to be able, we're going to have a, a medium that's, that is our default that we're better at, right? But at the end of the day, we, we kind of have to be at least decent enough at all of them <laughs> to point across, especially your inside sales team, right? Like communicating over phone or text. And um, yeah, so I, I hear you. I hear you. We got yeah. to develop the, the right muscles right now. Exactly. And the last thing I would say is for people, get used to switching your camera on, okay, your webcam. Uh, it's amazing how many people are still very resistant to that. And the mm-hmm. thing is, you don't have to, if you if you call a prospect, you can switch it on at the beginning and just say, I just wanted to put a face to the name. Here I am. You don't have to keep it on for the whole time if you don't want to. And it doesn't matter whether the other person switches theirs on or not, you should still do it. Chances are they actually normally will. But I think that's one of the big things that that people need to get over because you still hear people going, oh, I hate the way I look on webcam. I don't like webcams. I'm, I'm much yeah. better in person. You just say, I now have just, I just say, get over it. 
unfortunately. I agree. Where the world is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting how our ego will get in the way yeah. of food relationship, right? At yeah. the end of the day. And so, yeah, we have those conversations too. And, and we talk with folks all the time. And, and one of the one of the exercises we'll do is we'll talk about um, you know, the the continuous improvement. And, and we 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 share with folks like the question you want to be asking is what do I need to do different? What mm-hmm. do I need to change versus how am I doing? Right. How am I doing is a perfectionist question, right? I want to grade. I want to judge. Yes, yes, you know? yes. Right. And that is kind of what opens our heart up to that feeling versus, okay, what do I need to be doing here? What do I need to be doing differently is a very, very empowering question. Mm-hmm. What do we all need to be doing right now is turning on our camera and engaging. Yeah. Right? So I don't care what um, you look like. I really don't. <laughs> right? yeah. So I don't, Look like. Yeah. And to be honest, it also imposes a little bit of discipline on you and keeps you honest, mm-hmm. because let's face it, uh, if you're not, uh, if you haven't, fa- if you're working from home now, uh, you need to find a space that you can operate in that if you switch on your camera, they're not seeing the dirty dishes piled up behind you in the kitchen and that they're not seeing they're not seeing you like disheveled and in your favorite sweats or whatever so I also think it's a good thing because it also imposes a little bit of discipline on you as well 100 percent, 100 percent. we still need to be presentable there's something to be said about you well I think it's it's a psychological thing because if I if I turn up in, if I just roll out of bed and throw on my sweats and sit here, my brain is not in work mode. My brain yeah. is in leisure mode, yeah. right? Relax, leisure mode. Um, if I get out of bed and I shower and I put on proper clothes and I get myself ready just like I would if I was going to a physical office, my brain's in work mode. So there's a, there's a, comp- there's a connection there. And that's why you say, you know, people who are slow starters in the day or whatever like that, uh, yeah, a lot of it has to do with how you start your day, how you prepare yourself. 100%, 100%, be, be prepared physically and mentally. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, Dion, uh, all of Dion's information will be in her contributor bio below. But before we go, if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and what your organization does. Yeah, thank you for that. So um, again, we we help organizations build their inside sales team. So we, we do a lot of coaching um, some training, but it's really a lot of training the trainer at the end of the day and, and coaching and working with organizations to build or up level their inside sales teams. Um, so that's what we do. I've been in this now for gosh, 20 some odd years, um, building and scaling inside sales team and inside sales by design is five years old at this point. So we're, we're truly blessed and super grateful and, and love what we do. And John, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, I love it. And I love your uh, your tagline, like, be deliberate, be intentional, be successful. I think those are great, uh, great words for everyone to live by. Thanks. All right. Well, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you off another expert interview really soon. And again, stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you.